Hey, what's up y'all? It's Dr. Paul with the next installment uh, of our Clean and Press series for this Marvel premiere number 28, TJ's book, the winner of our 100 subscriber giveaway. Um, today we're going to do a summary of what I've done off camera and um, talk a little bit about photo bleaching because <clears throat> that's one of the techniques that I used. So as you saw, I dry cleaned the exterior front and back cover. I think those came out quite well. One thing to remember is um, when you are erasing some of these harder erasers, like this one in particular, but for me, the uh, Mars plastic, which is a bit more abrasive than the Pentel click eraser, you will degloss the book a little bit. So the correct thing to do, you'll be able to see it if you use incident light, you'll be able to see a little dull spot. The correct thing to do is buff that spot back out with a cotton round. And all you need to do is buff it until you no longer see that dull spot when you look with incident light, okay? So uh, it's been eraser, clean, dry cleaned. I used, I think you saw in the video, I used this um, kneadable eraser for a couple of things. Um, and now I think this is pretty clean. What I did off camera, front and back, what I did off camera was I worked on the interior cover. Um, so this one, as you know, had a lot of color rub right here. So one thing to know about color rub is it's actually ink. It's not dirt or soiling, it's ink. And so the techniques that'll pick that ink up are likely to also lift the ink that we want to keep on the page. So color rub is slightly more difficult to lift than soiling, um, typically, and especially where it exists over, over, um, over colored areas. So you can see that I did a pretty good job of cleaning it out of the whites here, here, here here but you can also see that where it goes through the lettering is and through the light blue it's very difficult to lift that without lifting light blue or lifting the lettering and um, so I had to make value judgments on how much of that and how hard I was going to work on it but I think that came out quite well also recall that we had some uh, color bleed through here and I photo bleached that. And we'll talk about that a little bit more um, in a moment, but I wanna go move, now I wanna move on to the interior back cover. The interior back cover, you may recall, had um, actually rather severe color rub from this red and this banner. So it had red all along here, and it had red especially right in here. And we've effectively removed it. Um, you can barely see a tiny evidence of red right here, but we've effectively removed it. And again, it would not have been super effective to try to erase it because it's ink. And the sorts of techniques that work for removing ink are gonna remove the ink that we wanna keep as well. And it doesn't tend to lift very well with ink either. See, if you look, I just was erasing there. That little tiny um, evidence of red that still exists there, I was not able to lift with a normal eraser. So what's the solution to that? Well, the solution is photo bleaching. And photo bleaching is a technique that you can use for paper conservation. Um, it's very well understood. So one of the misconceptions is that this is a brand new concept or that it was just invented. That's just simply not true. Um, woodworkers have literally known since ancient times that sunlight could bleach or tan wood, depending on the circumstances. And after all, paper is just mostly ground up wood, right? So basically humans have understood um, photo bleaching on some level, or at least that, that it occurred as a phenomenon uh, for thousands of years. More recently, um, you know, scientists have started to study it. And the, the first mention that I could find of it in the scientific literature is from the 1940s. 
But in the 1960s and forward, there was a, a series of articles in the paper conservation literature that really delve into the very specific wavelengths and what they do. And um, Rick Morgan, who's a fellow scientist and comic enthusiast and a YouTuber, um, has a pretty good summary of the scientific literature on the subject. On his YouTube channel, I'll put a link in the description. I think about one minute into that video is where he lists um, basically a bibliography of the, of the literature that he had pulled together. Um, but at the end of the day, all we really need to know is uh, the, the radiation that comes from the sun is very broad spectrum. It, it starts off even broader, but you know our atmosphere filters a lot of it out. But even so, we're still getting all of the visible and even infrared and ultraviolet spectrum from the sun, right? The sun is a big nuclear pile and it's just throwing off radiation. A lot of it's filtered along the way. That's what, what we're receiving on a book. So if you've ever seen those books that sit too long um, on the wall, those nice wall books that are all faded out and they all look blue, they've been in the sunlight way too long. That's what sunlight can do. That's because sunlight is broad spectrum. So there are parts of the spectrum that certain wavelengths that are bleaching um, all of your inks out, and that's what you're getting. But in the scientific literature, it's been studied which wavelengths actually just bleach the paper white and which wavelengths attack the ink. And what's been found is that the wavelengths between 420 and 480 nanometers actually have this nice bleaching effect without killing the inks, okay? And so controlled exposure to those wavelengths can just dramatically improve the look of a page without damaging the paper or the, the existing inks. Um, so uh, I think Rick Morgan has actually tried to get the very peak of that, and he's actually maybe commissioned somebody to build LEDs for him with a, with a uh, wavelength of 450 nanometer. Uh, I use this uh, LED array, which is a 450 to 460 nanometer, because these are commercially available and relatively inexpensive. I bought this from Amazon, and um, I'll put a link in the description to this as well. These are, um, they just plug into regular sockets, and you can just expose the page to this. Now, the distance and the time does matter, and this book by Michael Sorensen and his um, collaborators actually has, is, is a really good practical guide to use of um, blue LEDs for photo bleaching. So I recommend that book. I'll also put a link in the description to purchase that from Amazon. Um, but basically what you need to know is um, you can use a tool like this to deal with a defect that's come from color rub. And we've done that effectively here. As I said, there's the barest trace of red left, but all the red in here is effectively gone. This is dramatically decreased to the point where I don't think this is gonna certainly count on any graders notes and it presents much better. One of the things I mentioned was that this, there was a lot of yellowing on this page as well. And we've decreased that yellowing that occurred all through here. That's color rub, color transfer from here. Um, lastly, um, we only expose the interior of this page to the blue LED in the correct wavelengths. Um, but it actually lightened this up as well. So uh, I, I may hit this uh, for just a few more hours. So just for context, I'm about um, seven inches away from the surface with my LED. And on this page here, we, it only needed about two hours of exposure to lighten up all the areas on here that we wanted to deal with. Um, this color rub was a bit more extensive in the, on the back cover. So this has a total of about four hours, two, two hour sessions. And I may hit it for just a little bit more because 
right in here, right in here, there's the barest hint. It's, it's really cleaned up, but there's the barest hint still of red ink. And then lastly, um, there, this could also be just brightened up a little bit, um, a little bit yellow in here. So I'm going to give this a little bit of um, photo bleaching. And the next video, I'll show results of that. And we'll, I think we'll move on to dealing with the staple before we go ahead and do our final press. So just wanted to give you an update on the progress and wanted to do a little um, tutorial on the use of blue wavelengths, blue light in the wavelengths of approximately 420 to 480 nanometers. Um, and how use of those um, wavelengths allows us to photo bleach while preserving all of the parts of the book that we really want to preserve. So we can really dramatically improve the, uh, the presentation of the book and um, without really, you know, any deleterious effects of the, of the radiation. So that's it for today. Really appreciate your attention. Um, once again, thankful to TJ for entrusting me with his book and uh, hope you're out there enjoying the hunt. And until next time, take care of one another.